Welcome back to Madman Review. You said you wanted it, so here it is. Episode number five of our Deadly Shootings Where Good Guy Stops Bad Guy series. You love these intense stories, so we're not slowing down. Big thanks, as always, to our friends at Heritage.org and the Daily Signal for their awesome monthly collections of defensive gun use stories. Oh, and a special shout out to Amy Swear. Ma'am, your work is simply phenomenal. Today, we've lined up eight more stories that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. It's all about the unsung heroes and the everyday folks who step up in critical moments. These are the stories that don't make it to the big headlines. And speaking of headlines, if you're wondering why you don't see these stories on major networks like CNN or NBC, let's just say it's because the media landscape has its quirks. Partly thanks to puppet masters like George Soros. But hey, you might catch a whisper or two on your local news. So with all that in mind, let's dive into these stories and uncover all the details. Number 8. Drunken Shooting In Houston, detectives pieced together the events of a tragic incident where a drunkard was shot by a neighbor after he had opened fire on his own mother. This all unfolded in an apartment in North Harris County. Harris County Sheriff's deputies rushed to the scene at 9-11 Highland Cross after reports of gunshots were called in. They found a man dead and a woman critically wounded, swiftly sending her to the hospital. There is a long gun here at the scene. Uh, Those uh, bullet strikes did exit their apartment door, striking a neighbor's door. Here's what went down. The 58-year-old mom was enjoying a 4th of July barbecue with friends when her 22-year-old son, who seemed drunk and off-kilter, crashed the party. Things took a dark turn when the son, for reasons unknown, started shooting inside their apartment. His door alone had over 20 shots that I could see, if not more, and it did penetrate another apartment. The mom, bloody and desperate, tried to escape her son, wasn't letting up. That's when a quick-thinking gun owner stepped in. Seeing the son chasing his mother with an AK-47, this neighbor didn't hesitate. He grabbed his own gun and shot the aggressor. Uh, Shooting, anything and everything in the apartment complex, and... Uh, the, the Good Samaritan went to his apartment, uh, got his firearm, confronted the, the shooter and shot and killed him, saving the woman's life. The guy's brave intervention saved the woman's life. Authorities secured both guns at the scene. The mother was hospitalized, underwent surgery, and should be fully recovered by now. Number 7. Kalashnikov Surprise In a tense showdown in Pensacola, a homeowner defended his turf against intruders with an AK-47-style rifle and fortunately will not be facing any charges, as confirmed by Escambia County Sheriff Chip Simmons. Three guys, posing as familiar faces, forced their way into a house on Pinestead Road, not knowing the homeowner was armed and ready. Security footage tells a wild story. As the homeowner unlocks his door, he rushed and shoved inside by two of the guys while their buddy, armed and on edge, hangs back. The homeowner drops his gun in the scuffle, which one of the intruders snatches up. But this homeowner was not out of options. He dashed to another room, grabbed a backup weapon, and opened fire, sending the intruders running for their lives. Goes to show how important backup gun is. One had a handgun, pulled a handgun from his waistband, and the other two were shoving the victim in his house. Um, The victim had a handgun that he was hiding. That handgun slipped out and fell to the ground. He picked up that gun, uh, an AK-47 style gun, and he started shooting for his own protection to get them out of his house and to protect himself. In a chaotic escape, the intruders piled into a getaway car, crashing into a mailbox as they fled, but they didn't all get away scot-free. Later that night, a guy shows up at the hospital with a gunshot wound to the head, and the cops are connecting the dots. 
So far, DeTorrance Hackworth, 20, and Antonio DeWayne Dean Jr., 18, are in cuffs, facing a laundry list of charges, including armed robbery and a gun possession violations. Another 18-year-old is still at large, and there's a fourth mystery man the cops are keen on identifying, asking locals to chip in with any leads. Hackworth has been arrested. Deputies are looking for Antonio Dean Jr. and Joseph Sanders. And if you know who this man is, you're asked to call the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Number six, a hop, skip, and a jump. Over in Williamsburg, the quiet of a Monday afternoon was shattered when the York Pokwason Sheriff's Office got called to a fatal shooting on Corvette Drive in the Creekside Landing area. Neighbors were left rattled just across the way, expressing their shock. It's a wild, broad daylight, and this kind of thing happens right here where they live. Makes you think it could happen to anyone, anywhere. It's just scary to think that something like that could happen in the middle of the day, and that it could have happened to anybody on the street. I was just worried about my neighbors and my friends across the street, hoping that they were okay. When you see an ambulance, it's just, you know, a pit in your stomach. Here's what went down. A guy hops a fence and makes a beeline for a homeowner chilling on the porch with his family. The family, sensing trouble, bolts inside and secures the door. But the intruder wasn't backing down, trying to bust the door open. That's when the homeowner took a stand. He got a hold of his firearm, took aim, and shot the intruder dead. Turns out the intruder didn't have a weapon, but good thing the homeowner will not be facing any charges. The incidents got the neighborhood on edge. Neighbors are taking no chances, told our friends straight up. Time to hit the shooting range, get real familiar with our firearms. Number 5, Second Time's a Charm over in Indianapolis, a gentleman named Howard Murphy found himself in a deja vu situation, having to protect his home for the second time since 2014. It all went down so quick. One minute, this guy's hurling a video game console at me. The next, gunfire, Murphy recounted. Back in 2014, Murphy had to use his gun when a guy busted into his place on the northwest side. That intruder ended up in cuffs. It's a real downer, you know, you bust your tail to build a life and then someone just waltzes in thinking they can take what's yours, Murphy expressed. He took a gamble, not thinking I wasn't there and, you know, and I happened to be there. Fast forward to this Friday morning, history repeated itself in the very same house. This time, Metro Police confirmed that Murphy shot and killed 64-year-old Steve Shepard Jr., the man who broke into his home. Having to be armed in your own home? Shouldn't be the norm, Murphy lamented. He reached for something. I don't know if it was a, like a sludge hammer, but he reached for something, and he was going to strike me, and then that's when shots was fired. But that's the reality in our neighborhood, as sad as it is. Number four, end of the road for a career criminal. In Austin, a robbery attempted at a North Austin shopping plaza took a sharp turn when a man defended himself shooting the would-be thief. The wounded suspect, identified as 17-year-old Jalen Reed, managed to escape by car but didn't make it far before emergency services were called. Reed, now facing a charge for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon, is no stranger to law enforcement, boasting a heavy rap sheet for similar offenses. He's been linked to a string of recent robberies, police records indicate. The incident went down in the parking lot of the Domain Shopping Center. Reed, faced disguised with a black shirt and armed, ambushed two individuals swiping a shopping bag and a backpack. As he fled to a getaway car, one of the victims, who was legally armed, opened fire, striking Reed. In the chaos, Reed dropped a stolen gun at the scene and was later found in the car with the stolen items, only a short distance from the crime scene, thanks to a 911 call from a passenger. But Reed's troubles don't stop there. He's recently been tied to two more incidents in Austin. A few days prior, another robbery ended with Reed being shot and later found by police. Also, from several days before that incident, Reed, along with Andre Harris, Paul Rossum, and Minor, is suspected of being behind a whopping nine robberies. Adding to his woes, Reed is now connected to a total of 10 robbery cases. New charges include aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and more robbery counts. 
Two incidences on that same day highlight Reed's escalating criminal activities, and one of witnesses' quick thinking disrupted a robbery, and another, Reed's reckless gunfire towards a truck, thankfully resulted in no injuries. Recently released from juvenile custody and cutting off his court-ordered ankle monitor, Reed's brief taste of freedom spiraled back into a web of criminal accusations. Number 3. Karen Shot in the Leg Des Moines cops rushed to High V on Euclid Avenue after reports of a shooting hit the airwaves. Once on scene, they pieced together the puzzle. Turns out an unexpected showdown between two women erupted, leading to gunfire that injured both. Iowa law allows for use of reasonable force to stop someone from hurting you or someone else, and that includes deadly force under certain circumstances. The woman who pulled the trigger did so in self-defense. Capri LaShawn Francis, 30, apparently attacked her without any warning. Amidst the chaos, the defender, legally armed, shot Francis in the leg and accidentally hit a bystander too. Luckily, both injuries weren't life-threatening and after a hospital trip, everyone was okay. Des Moines police initially heard Francis claim she was the one attacked. However, after a solid six-hour investigation, combining witness accounts and video evidence, the truth came to light. Francis was the aggressor. Sergeant Paul Perizek from Des Moines PD explained the video footage alongside witness statements made it crystal clear. The real victim was the other woman who was blindsided and attacked by Francis. Plus, some off-camera actions were clarified by witnesses, like the victim, being put in a headlock. Number 2. Perv Crashed and Burned in Clearwater, Florida, a chilling home invasion ended tragically when a woman was forced to defend herself against an intruder early Tuesday morning. The Clearwater Police Department shared that a call came in from a woman who was jolted awake to find a man in her bedroom. Situation escalated when the intruder, later identified as 26-year-old Justin William Wright, started assaulting her. In a moment of sheer self-defense, she was able to reach for her gun and fatally shot Wright. She was able to reach out and call 911 during this attack, but the attack persisted, at which time she was able to retrieve a gun that she had lawfully purchased, and she used that gun to defend herself and uh, fired one shot, which resulted in the death of the intruder. The incident unfolded in her home on Flagner Drive, a place she hadn't called home for very long, according to Chief Dan Slaughter during a press briefing. He mentioned that the emotional toll of such an event is heavy, noting nobody wants to be in a position where they have to defend themselves like this. It's understandably upsetting. Adding a layer in the story, Wright was actually the woman's neighbor. Whether they had crossed paths before is still under scrutiny by the police. As the investigation into the motives continues, thoughts are with the woman at the center of it all. Neighbors reflected on the lasting impact, saying, It's the kind of shock that doesn't fade easily. It's a breach of safety that keeps replaying in your mind. No doubt she's going to be wrestling with this for a while. Number 1. Nonagenarian Butt Kicker In a surprising turn of events, a 93-year-old retired plumber named Joe Howard Teague flipped the script on a bunch of would-be robbers, managing to shoot one and send the others running after they barged into his Los Angeles residence, as reported by the authorities. The ordeal began just past midnight when Teague made an urgent call to 911. He reported facing off against a group of intruders and even trying to perform a citizen's arrest on them, as he later recounted to the police. Teague described a chaotic scene where, despite his firm stance with a firearm, the intruders, who had forcefully entered his home, retaliated by hurling various items at him. It's like they were bringing a knife to a gunfight, he observed. Uh, I'm the owner of the property back there. I had a burglar, mm -hmm. and he didn't quite make it. By the time the police arrived, they found Joseph Ortega, 33, wounded from a gunshot within Teague's home. Other suspects were seen making a dash from the scene. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department stated the investigation confirmed that Ortega and others were on Teague's property when shots were fired. 
Teague, who thankfully wasn't hurt, was interviewed by the police and then allowed to go back to his house. The findings from the sheriff's office indicated that Teague's actions were in self-defense. Oscar Malma, who's married to a relative of Teague, shared that this wasn't the first break-in Teague had faced. Frustrated by slow police responses in the past, Teague felt compelled to protect his home. He was just defending his own space. It's hard to imagine him facing any charges for that, Mulma pointed out. As for Ortega, the intruder Teague shot, he was last reported to be in critical condition in a hospital. And that wraps up this video. If it was entertaining, please don't forget to leave us a like, share the video with your friends, and subscribe for more of these kinds of content. And give that little bell icon a quick little tap so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there.